Well, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Cesar, and we are talking about BCHG and LTCN today. At the request of Paulo, it is Sunday night for me. I realized that it, it might be Monday evening, Monday morning for some people. By the time most of you watch this, it'll probably be Monday, so hopefully this will be... Uh, a nice thing to wake up to as the markets are opening up. But uh, I'm gonna pause the music here. I do have a couple of things I wanna mention with this, but other other than that, man, not, not much has changed since my last video. So uh, buckle up, hit that like button, subscribe if you wanna see more. We're gonna get into it now. Was there something, Paul, actually, that's what it was. Paul wanted me to go over something a little bit more specific here. Let me see, what was it? Right. Thank you, Paul, for your kind comment, by the way. But you were asking me how low I think these could go after the bull run. So we're talking about the lows for the next bear cycle is what you're talking about. Um, I think the reason you want to know this is you said you're planning on holding some, a small bit, but a decent bit nonetheless, but uh, definitely a minority of your total portfolio. You're thinking about holding some for the long term, like even through the bear market, which is a good thing to do with some assets. Is it good to do with the trust? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, it really could be. I don't know. That's up to you. You know, I do personally, as an investor, I feel more confident and secure in investing in the underlying asset than I do the trust. With that being said, the trusts are more, you know, they're more susceptible to immense growth in a short amount of time. If, if BCH grows 20%, BCHG could grow 100% in that same amount of time, you know, um, or less, but still, still more than BCH. That's just generally how it goes. Contrary to that though, the losses tend to be greater too. So just, just keep that in mind. It might be good, not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but it might be good to roll over, sell out completely. If, if you're going to hold BCHG, why not just hold BCH instead? Uh, for the bear cycle, you know, you could hold the one that drops less for the bear cycle, but the one that pumps more for the bull cycle, maybe. That might not be how it works out. Watch BCHG drop less than BCH now that I've said that. But anyways, man, enough enough of the hypotheticals. Let's, uh, let's get into this. I'm going to pause the music. I'm talking about these two today. Are we doing good here? Let me just look, make sure we're back here. Okay. So I am going to go over the general stuff and then we'll get into that question as to where potentially we could see the lows. And the thing is that's going to be a very difficult question to answer because we don't have our highs yet. Um, but we can assume and with assumptions, maybe we can, we can project a little bit, but looking at the daily here, you did close below the 50 for the last two days after rejecting the 60 area on your RSI, that is the bullish area of control. You've rejected the bullish area of control. Not only that, but if we take the relative high here on a FIB basis on the daily scale here, you can see that we rejected the 61869, the golden ratio zone. Rejected that. We've crossed back below the 382. All we have to do now is get below the 236 at about $11.21. Is that $11? That is $13. My bad. $13.21. Couldn't see it behind this bar here. Um, once we get below that on a closing basis, it's very certain. And in my opinion, it's already pretty damn condemning for this thing that we're going to see extensions off of this. Extensions would lead to a minimum of a price at $9.40 based off of this with a maximum potential even below uh, $6. It's possible. But I'm focused, I'm primarily focused on this $9.40 to $7.85 zone. And I really do like this as a possible low. Um, however, right around $10, just below there, I mean, that that makes sense as well. So I do think BCH looks like it wants to go lower. If we look at the three hour, it might be it might be off to a bad week next week. Next week could be the week we're looking for. On the bright side, I do think you're gonna come to your low soon for, uh, for BCHG, I think you're gonna find it soon, probably sometime in May, if not potentially tomorrow, potentially by the end of this month. I'm may Maybe not tomorrow, but sometime in May. First half of May is what I'm thinking. Um, just because you find your low doesn't mean it's time to go just yet, right? I've, I've been saying that with a few things. It could be. It, maybe you find your low and you bounce to, to high heavens afterwards, but patience. Don't, don't expect the low being in to mean that we're off to new highs right then and there. Um, oftentimes we're not. You know, you look here, you found this low. It was pretty close to this low. It technically wasn't the low, but you found this low here. You're in your bottom zone for one, two, three, four, five about six weeks. Then you broke out on your seventh week and then you consolidated more for another five weeks. So really you were pretty damn boring for a while up until, and you know, you slowly started to climb 
but then you broke out and as soon as you broke out you moved sideways again so just because you find your low doesn't mean you're moving up yet you know you found your low here in january middle of january you didn't break out until the beginning of march so it, it can be months or a month and a half after we find our low that we uh we start to move up for bchg just keep that in mind um as far as where it could be for the next cycle again that's going to be very difficult to gauge you know here i had a pivot point from this low to this high right here right so we could have projected the 1618 being the potential bottom right um, obviously to be between 198 and 78 cents would be the primary area that I would look for after seeing this failed attempt to the 1414 and coming back and closing below the 1618 the next logical target would have been the 1886 would I personally have gotten this exact low correct probably not um, I would have probably guessed 38 cents but you know still going down to about 31 cents that's not too far off when we're talking about an asset that topped off at 60 cents you know just just looking at this here I'm getting an idea. I'm showing you what I'm thinking based off of this because we're going to use these numbers that we've seen for the next cycle. Because this is the only thing that we have to reference right here, right? Is this is this extension kind of off of that there? Um, that's that's really it. You know, maybe we can see how much it dropped. I would assume that you have less of a drop. So that's <laughs> that was a 99.48 percent drop from the all-time high. Um, I definitely do believe we're going to see less of a drop than that, but man, we could still see a 90% drop and that wouldn't, that would be dramatically, because look, 99% 99% to 90% doesn't seem like that big of a difference, but it is, I'll show you. That's 99% right there, right at the low, at about 31 cents. You go to 90%, look at that, right? Way up here, man. Way up there, way all the way at 593. So um, it compounds as it goes lower. Yeah, if that makes any sense. Um, negative numbers, man, are powerful. The, the larger, the closer to 100 they get, the, the bigger the differences get. Like that 90 to 100 is much harder than 0 to negative 10, you know, of 0 to 10% of a loss, if that makes sense. Um, so we're going to expect potentially the 1272 one, to the 1618. I doubt we see the 1886 for this extension. Now, again, that extension going down does not mean that we have to see that extension going up. I very much doubt that we'd see a 63K, $6,300 BCHG. I suppose it's possible. Let me think. I suppose it's not. <laughs> I suppose it's not. I keep hearing noises, man. This isn't my house. I forgot to mention in the beginning of this video, I'm at my my in-laws house we're staying here and i'm in their garage obviously right now but I keep hearing noises man and it's scary and i just noticed a bottle of looks like there's a bottle of something back there that is alcoholic and it looks fun it looks like looks like my father-in-law has had some of it anyways enough enough of that man uh top to bottom 250 to 1500 that 1500 area used to seem ridiculous to me, but as time goes on and as I like really confidently believe where BCH could go and you see the relationship between BCH, G and BCH, I really think that 1500 area could be possible. 250 is the minimum expectation, but 1500 is absolutely possible. And in between, of course, we go to 500, 600, something, something in between that aren't even directly on these lines, but just a little bit through. Um, if we were to take from a high point, or sorry, a low point, to a high point here, your 382 would be at previous all-time highs, literally lining up perfectly with that. And that's that makes sense. When you line up with the 1618 from a, from this, like it, it would be the 382. It always is, no matter where you draw it, right? If I draw it over here, I go to this low, all the way up to the 1618. Your 382, it's just math. It's, it's how it's going to work. Your 382 is going to be the 100 level. That's always how it's going to be. Um, if that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, just ignore it. You don't, it, it's not important. All I'm trying to say is around 60 bucks being the low, that'd be a 96% drop. Yeah, okay, maybe. I don't know. And that wouldn't be crazy at all, finding support on a previous cycle's high. 
Best case scenario, I would think, is if you see deeper extensions than the 1272, you could hold support in that 250 area. But finding support after seeing a strong move up, coming back and finding support at the 100 to the 886 area would make sense. So really, I would think for BCHG, and, and I could be wrong. This is so much time away. We don't have our high end yet, um, and things could be different. A whole slew of things could happen to this trust that could be beneficial or, or detrimental to it. So who knows how well this will hold up, but if I had to confidently, unconfidently say where I think the next bear cycle low is going to be for BCHG, not that it's relevant to the current times, uh, I would say probably around the previous cycle's high, which would be $60 right around there is where I think you're going to go. That's that's the best guess I have. To me, it makes sense, but we're not looking at a whole lot of data when it comes to something like that. That's a real straight guess. It's more of a guess than a prediction, right? They're all guesses, but it's a very strong guess there, so... You could go as low as 33 bucks. That wouldn't be crazy at all either. That's BCHG. Let's talk about LTCN. We're going to do the same thing here, uh, just some general analysis, and then projecting out where we could see the next cycle's low. It's an odd question. It's a, it's a bit different, but I, I accept your challenge, sir. It's, it's Don't expect it to be right. We're really spitballing ideas here. High to low, 2272 hit, holding support on the 1618, finding resistance on the 1886. That is a little bit deconstructive behavior. We could expect to see the 1414 or the 1272 between about 2650 to 2356. I think we've been through this before. Normally, I would look to f uh, find support on the next level down, which in this case would be $26.5, but I think there is more significance around that 2356 area, if I remember correctly. If we take this low to this high, yes. Right, because oftentimes if that's the 382, which it is right there, I know it says the 1414 on this fib. I know I've got a lot of lines here, but if I delete this, oftentimes you do go a little bit below your 382. And what's a little bit below? What's in between the 0.5 and the and the 382 of this fib? Well, it's the 1272 of this fib, the 23.56 dollar area. So LTCN, I think you're moving your way down to about 23 to 24 bucks. Um, that's your next low, right? You're probably working your way lower than that, but I would expect that you probably bounce in this area. You move down, you bounce, you probably come back up and then you have one last sell off or something like that. If not, that could be your low, but I would, I would think at least $23, $23. And I would think lower primarily because you have this bearish divergence in your weekly RSI. You have a high here and a lower high here. Paired with a high here in the weekly price based off the closing candle, the green, I guess it would be the red one, wouldn't it? Nope, technically it'd be the green one. And then this high here at this green one, lower highs here, higher highs there, that is bearish divergence. And generally you pull back to where the divergence started, generally being the keyword. It doesn't mean you have to, it's just kind of a normal thing. And actually even on top of that normal thing, you tend to not only go back to where the divergence formed, but you go a little bit past that even, right? So if we pull up the FIB again, the relative FIB here from this low to high, uh, just a little bit past that line is the 6.9 zone. Could happen. You know, the 6.9 is a common area. I do have that identified for a reason, right? It's an area that I find significant. Um, sometimes you tip it perfectly. Like literally, we've, we've shown that in plenty of examples on this channel, but uh, I always say we, man. It's just me. Like I'm, I, I, there's nobody else. There's you guys, and I'm grateful for you guys. Hit that like button and subscribe. You guys, thank you very much. Um, but I keep saying we as if like I'm Smeagol, <laughs> if, if you understand that reference. I'm sure most of you do, man. I'm talking to crypto nerds. I know most of you do. Actually, with, with this, maybe not so much crypto. You know, I know some of you may be, but if you're, if you're in Grayscale Trust, you might be more stock oriented. At any rate, at any rate, 1475 to 1690, specifically with a heavy emphasis on that 1575 area, would be where I think LDCN is working its way down inevitably before it decides to move higher. But the first move, the first more immediate low, we're at 3570 right now. I think we're going to move down to about $23.5. So that's, that's what's going to happen potentially with LTCN for the more immediate uh, weeks to come is my thoughts. Maybe even, it might even happen this week. Who knows, man? These things like to move up fast and down fast. Um, you know, right there, perfect example. 35% in one week, who knows? It could be, it could be this week, man. You also had a rejection off of your 
top to bottom here, looking at the daily. Had a little tip off with the uh, golden ratio there at the 618. Literally tipped it below the 382. It's pretty condemning to me, but we're gonna do this wackadoo kind of idea again with trying to identify, and I hope you know I'm not uh, insulting you, Paul, when I say wackadoo, man. It's just, it is a unique uh, question. You know, it's it's not relevant to the current times, but it might be something to get excited for. You know, I get why why you might be curious to know. Uh, but again, my question is, like, how well can we expect these trusts to hold up? Will they hold up better than their native assets? Probably not. They tend to go on discounts, right? They do better in the bull cycle. And they do worse in the bear cycle. That's how it is. And why is that? Probably because less liquidity. That's probably the genuine reason why. Less liquidity means it's easier to move prices. When we're going up, that's great. When we're going down, not so great. So I would, I would uh, invite you to flirt with the idea, again, of if you are trying to hold for multiple cycles for the long term, if it's for long-term capital gains tax, I guess it wouldn't really work this way unless you can trade LTCN and LTC in your IRA. If you can do that tax-free, then I suppose it, it, that in that case it would be okay or if you live somewhere that's tax-free. But if you're trying to get the long-term capital gains on it, then maybe this isn't a good idea. But I would think holding LTCN in the bull market and then if, if you want to be involved still, switching it over to LTC in the bear market. Really, I think you should just have cash, but if you want to be involved and you're not totally sure, you know, LTC will probably lose less than LTCN as the bear market fulfills itself during the next cycle. Anyways, idea here for LTCN, getting to it. <clears throat> I hope it all makes sense. We're going to use the all-time high <clears throat> to the all-time low. Significant fib in itself, man. <clears throat> I don't know what's wrong with me, guys. I don't smoke. I don't really exercise, so maybe I need to do that. <clears throat> Hold up, man. <coughs> okay, okay. Looks really strong, man. 2,300 as a minimum target, 5,000. I doubt you're gonna see 15,600. This one, I really I really don't believe. Unless LTC just shocks the world, man, I don't see it happening. So I'm thinking 2,300 to $5,000. That's probably gonna be your target now. I'm not as certain of the price as to where this could go, right? Maybe we could see, I don't know. Sometimes this helps, but it probably won't. Yeah. Didn't think so. Well, I am gonna assume you go above your 1272. I am gonna assume that. So maybe for LTCN, your lows of the next bear cycle could be around 260. Maybe they're around 510. Maybe. Maybe they're all the way back down at 60 bucks. I don't I don't know. It, it could happen, it couldn't happen, but it's really hard to say. It's really hard to say. I would look at that 260 to 510 area as a real area of support for the next bear cycle lows. But that's that's my best guess. It's not off of a lot of data again, so I don't have really too much to conclude that with. We don't have our current cycle highs. We don't, you know, there's there's a whole lot of data points that would be helpful to get that idea. Um, but we'll figure it out as time goes on. That'll, that answer will become more obvious, or at least it'll poke its head a little bit more than it is now. Right now it's five feet under the ground. But enough talking, man. I think I've said everything I need to say. LTCN and BCHG both look like they want to go down in the more immediate terms. Uh, I would expect that this week and next week are going to be key weeks for these drops to happen. I think I think that's going to happen. Um, just because you see them pump, you know, if you drop 20% one day and then you pump 15% the next day or 10% the next day, does not mean we're over. These things can be volatile. You know they can. Uh, and just because they're not volatile and they just dump straight down with no remorse does not mean that it's dead either. We're in buy the dip territory, guys. I would hold the brakes. None of this is financial advice, but I would hold the brakes. 
I think if you're patient for like a week or two, maybe three or four, you might get some good opportunities. You'll see them come your way. Um, for LTCN, I think anything below 24 bucks is probably a good time to start DCAing, but again, not financial advice. I don't own any LTCN. I don't plan on owning any. For BCHG, it's probably a good time to DCA below $11, maybe below $12. Um, but again, not financial advice. And when I say DCA, I don't mean throw the bag at it. I mean throw parts of the bag at it, right? Um, because we know where these things are going by the end of the cycle, man. I think these things are going to do well. Uh, I, I know I'm not alone in that. Even though I don't hold any of this, I love I love talking about these, man, because it's crazy. And, and people get confused, too. And I'm, I'm happy to answer the question again or just like if anybody has the question, but why they do so much better. And the answer, the only answer that I can really think of is is that <clears throat> genuinely it's less liquidity. That's that's what it is. You've got the interest. You've got all the interest of Litecoin, all the interest of, BC, of BCH, right? But you've got less liquidity. So it's easier to move the prices. So that that's why I think it just moves higher. There's less involvement. So thinner order books equals bigger moves. Anyways, that's all I got, guys. I'm rambling. So I will see you on the next one. Take care of yourselves. Hit that like button. And bye-bye.